Hey everyone, it's Kirk McLean here, and you're watching Clay's Canucks Commentary. Hey Canucks fans, and welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary Live, presented to you by Van City Experts Real Estate. I am your host, Clay Emo, Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take for Wednesday night, April the 17th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. Well, friends, we now know our first round opponent. It is indeed the Nashville Predators. You can, uh, I put in the Paisley poll, uh, asked you how you're feeling about that now that we know that it's Nashville. Are you very confident? Are you pretty confident? Are you uneasy or are you scared? So vote in that poll question. I will wrap it up in a few minutes, uh, but I'm so happy that uh, we know who we're playing it. You know, uh, if I had to choose, I would have picked Nashville out of the three. That doesn't mean that um, I think we're going to beat them handily, but it's the one team that I think we have the better chance at. But we're going to uh, break it down over both today and tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow uh, I'll start to break it down today, uh, break the series down. But we're going to have a lot of time to do that. And then tomorrow we'll probably be talking about the season as a whole. But before we even get going, I want to recognize Jason. Jason, doing a good job of getting the donation train out of the station. It's like he's driving the train for the last little bit. So let's give Jason some love in the chat. $2 donation from Jason gets the donation train out of the station. Shout out to the mods for always doing a great job. They do indeed. I have a good group of mods here. Um, generally, they're not too busy because of the, the solid community that we are building here. But I know that I'm always very grateful for them. So let's give some love to Jason in the chat for doing the first donation of the night. And let's give, give some love to the mods overall. So let's do that right now. Moderators, thank you. Thank you for keeping this a safe and respectful place. Members, that's legends, Hall of Fame and franchise members. Thanks for your support as always. And to everyone else, no matter where you're watching from, whether my beautiful neighborhood of Steveston and Richmond, in the city, in the lower mainland province, country, continent, or around the world, thank you for being here. You know that I know that you could be watching anyone else, doing anything else, getting ready for work, school, or better, all three. But the fact that you are here with me, know how much I always appreciate you, and I never, ever take you for granted. Yes, BC Beastly is sweating. Sweating buckets because this chat is so crazy. So, friends... This is how you can get involved tonight. You can subscribe to the channel. So you get active in the chat section and get notified of my videos every single day. You can like the video. There are 120 people in here already. A nice mix of 64 on YouTube and, well, I didn't update this, 51 on X. That X number usually pumps up as we go but yes you can uh like the video like the fact that we are together like the fact that we know who our opponent is like the fact that we are P pacific division champions for the first time ever like the fact that we are building an amazing canucks community here and like the fact that carol being the legend herself just gifted 10 memberships so let's that's a 50 dollars donation friends and that means franchise membership for 10 people for a month. So let's give some love to Carol. She deserves it. Thank you, Carol, for your generosity. And franchise memberships go to Terry, RBLX, Daniel Bryan, Showtime, Cien, EJ, Bailey, SGP, Derek, uh, how do you say that? Skyla? Skilla? And Riley. So some new names in there, which is awesome. Some familiar names, which is awesome. Most importantly, Carol is awesome. So let's give some love to Carol in the chat. And let's give a warm welcome to all 10 of those new franchise members. Some of them returning. Some of them uh, being here for the first time. 
regardless you guys are all always welcome carol you are amazing so carol jason got the donation train out of the station and carol just put it into overdrive for the next little bit so thank you to both of you uh, so you can uh, continue to leave donations like jason did you can continue to gift memberships like carol just did you can buy your own membership you can upgrade your own your own membership you can use your monthly membership message your triple m and let's uh, rate and review if you're listening on a podcast platform now before i get going in the show aiden did ask very nicely said can we all salute the coyotes before we start discussing the series against the predators well aiden you can do whatever you want i will reference it now i guess things are starting to happen they played their last game it was against edmonton tonight i didn't see a lot of footage so i don't know if fans were sad if fans were mad if players were happy players were sad i know it, it's, it's tough i know these are multi-million dollar players some of them athletes but they are still human human beings so it's it's hard anytime you get um you kind of get uprooted and uh, without when it's not your choice so we'll see we'll see how that plays out but certainly aiden uh yes um i'm sure that we whether i don't think grieving is the right word but it's it'll we'll certainly have time to reflect recognize um that the change throughout the next the next few um the next few days for sure all right friends let me talk about what happened today let me talk about what could happen tomorrow and then i will throw it over to you yesterday was a lot of fun but it was a little bit rushed because i started a few minutes late because i got home from the game late and I had a couple of tech problems and then i had to leave early because it was my church night and uh um and yeah i have to be at my church by midnight so tonight uh don't have to rush off at 11 45 although we'll see how long we go depending how big the show is but uh yeah definitely have time to address um to talk address a lot of your questions for sure but I'll, I'll do the the usual i'll do the first half of the show and then um i'll go to all of you for the second half of the show unless of course you leave a donation or your monthly membership message which i highlight right away so this is from wallach wallach being a franchise member for two months and he says do you guys think the events that have transpired locking nashville and being able to potentially beat winnipeg for for best canadian team without fear oh yeah so yeah I'll, I'll bring that point up in a couple of seconds so wallach thank you for uh for being a member for two months and then i'm not ignoring your question but it's kind of what i was going to talk about in, in a couple of minutes so i'll i'll address it in in uh in detail for sure and it was just, i always i'm always curious as to when the the x twitter number eclipses the youtube number it just did so we're at 84 on youtube we're at now 94 on on x which is awesome thanks to everyone for watching whether you're watching on on x or on on youtube so tonight tonight we walked in to tonight's action knowing that la nor Vegas were playing, but that's Dallas was. And we know knew coming into tonight that if Dallas got one point or two, one point or two, by the way, you know, I'm pretty good about capturing my train of thought. I really like it when, when people are generous and I, I like to recognize them right away. So let's do it at the risk of, uh, at the risk of me losing my train of thought. Choo choo. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Daniel. Daniel, member for 11 months. And Daniel Hammond was around even before I was doing membership. And so nice to see you, Daniel. Uses his monthly membership message and says, um, Clay, are you doing a parody for the playoffs? Daniel, I I've kind of hinted at this before. I think, I think my time has come for parody songs. Uh, I had a great run to three dozen of them, a lot of them with Marie Huey and other great friends. But I'm not sure if that's as cool anymore. Now, I get it. The Canucks haven't made the playoffs properly since 2015. Of course, they made the bubble. And I did songs for the bubble. I did a couple songs there. But uh, I, I just don't think that there's the appetite out there right now that there used to be for my parody songs. Uh, I might be wrong, but that's kind of the, uh, the gut feeling I have right now. But thank you, Daniel, for being a, a wonderful supporter for the past 11 months. 
We got Marcus with a $2 donation. Thank you, Marcus. Says, I watched the Arizona game, crying fans and Kraus. Oh, interesting. Did not know that Logan Kraus was crying. Well, I appreciate you um, passing that along, Marcus, and I appreciate your, your donation. So let's give Marcus some love in the chat. Carol, I just saw your note that uh, I thought they were going to give you two months as opposed to two days. Darn it. I hope everything works out, Carol. I'll message you tomorrow for sure. That is that is crazy, but I guess is that illegal? Or is that within the owner's rights? Hmm. So as I was saying, the Canucks, if Dallas got one or two points, they would clinch first in the Western Conference overall. Canucks would be locked in the second as the other division winner. And as I explained in great detail last night, Nashville has already is already locked into wild card one because Vegas uh, LA cannot beat cannot beat Nashville by way of tiebreaker. And if Vegas even fell below Nashville, let's say Nashville finished ahead of both Vegas and LA. Uh, from a standings perspective, that's impossible. One of Vegas or LA has to make up the third spot in Pacific. So you you can't have four teams in a row from the central in the top six. So that's why we knew Nashville couldn't fall to eighth because they're ahead of LA on tiebreaker. Um, and then they couldn't um, go as high as six because that's physically impossible. So it was, hey, Dar, nice to see you. And uh, thank you for a post. I, I can't remember if you or Brian who posted that story, that, that great picture. You guys are, you guys are tall guys, by the way, very, very tall. Sean and I were kind of jink, uh, jinking, joking about that earlier today. So then um, I'm at church. It's Wednesday night. I'm running religious education for, for all the kids. And then I'm tracking the scores. And the first thing I see is that is zero, zero scoreless after one. And then I see that St. Louis takes the lead, one nothing. I was like, uh oh. Well, I was only, uh oh, oh, if I really wanted the Canucks to play Nashville. And like I said, I, I didn't, it didn't really matter to me. But if I had to choose, I would choose Nashville over LA or Vegas. Vegas, we split the season series with. LA, we lost the season series with. And Nashville, we swept them. We beat them 3 2 on October 24th in Nashville. We beat them 5 2 on Halloween night, a week later here. And then we beat them again 5 2 in nashville on december the 19th so that means we beat them um we outscored them 13 to 6. now i get it that was before nashville went on that heater in the spring 18 straight games with without uh, you know points in 18 straight games fine that's great we we didn't have a heater of that long but we had more consistent good play throughout the year so i i'm not worried that that nashville is the hotter team right now I'm actually very, I, I love the way the Canucks are playing. They've won three out of the last four. So anyways, it was St. Louis, one nothing. Then Dallas tied it up in the third period, or in the third, and it got to overtime. So that was the one point that the Dallas Stars needed. And then the Vancouver Canucks uh, cannot catch them anymore. So Dallas ends up winning that game, actually two to one in the shootout. We had Tampa Bay beating um, Toronto. I don't think, I don't think Matthews got his 70th goal, right? I'm just looking really quickly. Yeah, it does not look like Matthew scored tonight. And then we had the Islanders beat Pittsburgh. Oh, all these games mean nothing now because all the playoff in the East, especially all the positions are set. And then Edmonton um, ends up, maybe they're not motivated to, to catch us anymore because they can't. So they lost 5-2 to, to the Arizona Coyotes in the Coyotes' final game. So we have right here, we have yet another membership message, a Triple M from Marcus. The last time we made the playoffs was when I started my first semester at McGill. I'm talking, I'm guessing you're talking about 2020, right? Not, uh, not 2015 because the nine years would be a long time in university started my first semester at McGill. Now the next time we make the playoffs is when I'm graduating. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's really funny, Marcus. I guess that's when I met you right on here is, is, around that Canucks playoff run, or maybe just after, but I, 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 I'm pretty sure that I, I knew you about three or four years ago. So, um, through here. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So once again, thank you for being a member for a year, Marcus. 
That is awesome. I appreciate you. So let's look at the standings. We knew yesterday that the Eastern Conference was locked up already. It's going to be the Battle of Florida, Florida against Tampa. It's going to be the Rangers as the President's Trophy playing the, the team that just snuck in last night. And that's the Washington Capitals, even they're tied with Detroit. But uh, Detroit only had 27 regulation wins. So Washington had the Washington had the tiebreaker despite having a minus 37 goal differential. How do you figure that? Then Carolina versus the Islanders in the Metro. Boston versus Toronto in the Atlantic. Then, now... Yes, Marcus was uh, talking about, that's what I mean. Marcus was talking about the bubble, 2020, not uh, the last time the Canucks made the playoffs in 2015. Look at the West. Now we have a bit of clarity, not a lot. I mean, it's not finished yet. So we know Dallas is going to win the conference. So they are going to play wild card two. But we don't know who that is. So we know Winnipeg and Colorado are set. And we know Vancouver and Nashville is set because Vancouver is two, Nashville is seven. But depending on what happens tomorrow, both Vegas and LA play. Again, even if LA wins to go from 97 to 99, they still fall below Nashville because of, of the tiebreaker. So really, it's up to Vegas. If Vegas, um, no, sorry, it's not up to Vegas because uh, Vegas could lose, Nashville could win. Forget about Nashville. Vegas could lose, LA could win. So LA could win and go to 99. Vegas could lose, stay at 98. Then Vegas would drop to eighth. Wild card two, play Dallas, and then LA would play Edmonton in the first round. But technically, even if LA wins and they get to 99, they are still, um, yeah, they still lose the tiebreaker to Nashville, but it doesn't matter. Um, if Vegas loses, the tiebreaker between LA and Nashville doesn't matter because one of the two Pacific teams have to vault into third place in the Pacific ahead of Nashville when you, when you go one through eight. So again, if LA wins and Vegas loses, LA, even though they're behind Nashville in the standings, vault to number six, the third Pacific team. If Vegas, though, um, wins outright, they will stay third in the Pacific and LA will stay number eight. And then finally, if Vegas gets one point, LA gets two, LA holds the tiebreaker. So LA goes to uh, third and then Vegas drops. So we don't know for sure. That's why it was so interesting. If Dallas hadn't won yesterday, the whole, I mean, today the whole talk would have been, what are the Canucks going to do tomorrow? Are they actually going to try and manipulate who they play against? I, I don't think you should do that. I mentioned that yesterday. I don't think that's wise, but at least the question, the point is moot now. It doesn't matter because we know that Dallas has won the conference. However, Rick Tockett did speak today, and it sounds like Thatcher Demko is going to start because, and remember, this is a mean nothing game in terms of standings. We can't catch up to Dallas. We can't be caught by Edmonton. So this is just a chance to, to get ready for the playoffs. So it sounds like Thatcher Demko is going to play tomorrow would mean his second game in three, in three days. But uh, Rick Tockett did joke around, say if, he's, if the team's getting shelled, he's not going to have any problem pulling them because he doesn't want him to, to face too much pressure or run the risk of getting fatigued or hurt before game one. But Thatcher Demko will start. Now, the Canucks can't call anyone up from uh, from Abbotsford because uh, of salary cap constraints. So they have four players at their disposal. They have Niels Amon and Phil DiGiuseppe, who haven't been playing for the past little bit, up front. And they have Mark Friedman and Noel Juleson on the back end. Now, it's not as simple as saying, okay, Juleson, Friedman, you guys come in for a Hughes and Heronic. And... Phil DiGiuseppe and Niels Amon, a center and a winger. You guys come in for Miller and Besser. Yes, that would be quite a, a down a downgrade in talent overall. Um, but Rick Tockett hinted that it might be one or two guys, but I'm not sure if he's going to swap out all four guys. However, Winnipeg is probably, they have nothing to win, play for either. They can't catch Dallas but they can't be caught by Colorado. They know that they're the second seed in the central. They know they're going to have home ice advantage against Colorado. So what do they do? Do they rest Connor Hallebach? Do they rest Mark Shifley, Josh Morrissey, Kyle Connor? I don't know. So it's going to be kind of uh, not even cat and mouse because you, you set your lineup regardless of what the other team's going to do. It's not like you get to look at the other team's lineup and say, okay, I'm going to address these guys then. So my, my guess, my guess as the Canucks will 
Like, I don't think you play Mark Friedman because I don't think he gets in the playoffs, but maybe you bring in Juleson for, um, for one of the defensemen. Uh, maybe you bring in both of the one or two of the, the forwards in for one or two. So, uh, I, I guess my warning to you Canucks fans is let's not get up in arms if we if we see like a weaker lineup tomorrow because it really has no bearing on the standings really at all. You just want to put a decent team in front of Thatcher Demko. And even with those subs that I talked about, it's still a decent team, especially if Winnipeg isn't going to ice their strongest team at all. So it'll be really interesting to watch what kind of game it is tomorrow want to recognize another monthly membership message this is rosie rosie let's give him some love and actually this is a point that i think uh, someone made earlier and i think it's a good point rosero says if the canucks win tomorrow they finish ahead of the jets and if the jets win uh they finish ahead of the canucks so thank you rosero for being a member for eight months yes the winnipeg has 108 canucks have 109 so really and then toronto like Edmonton is 104 and Toronto is 102. So tomorrow night's game, actually the one thing they are playing for, I'm not sure if it makes a big deal to either team. They are playing for the best team in Canada. That is the stakes for tomorrow night because there are no positions um, up for grabs tomorrow. No, no, uh, no seating, no playoff position, no divisional uh, placing. So yeah, really you're battling to win the, you're battling to win the top team in Canada. Wow. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. You know, I was so ready tonight, you guys, to be talking about, oh, what should the Canucks do? Should they try and win for confidence? And and the, the sorry, back up. I was fully prepared to talk about what the Canucks should do if Dallas had lost to St. Louis tonight, outright in regulation. That means the Canucks would have had a chance to win the the western conference so then i was setting up for this big debate slash discussion of maybe home ice advantage throughout the first three rounds is important so why not win the conference because you're gonna have to face an la or vegas in the second round anyway so that's or in edmonton so that's kind of what i was thinking is to be ready to talk about but i would still go back to i'm not picking the opponent i'm not saying the connects are going to win uh against nashville for sure but all things being equal, you line all three teams up. Nashville is the one that I want, wanted the Canucks to play against. And I think I, I certainly wasn't alone in the fan base. And then people were split. Some people wanted to play Vegas because we split the season series. But some people didn't want to play Vegas because the Stone, Hurdle, and all the guys coming back. Some people want to play LA just because they think um, goaltending isn't strong in LA. Their system is boring to watch, but their goaltending isn't as good. Others didn't want to play LA because we, we've lost the season series and we had really trouble breaking down that one three one system. Regardless, that's where the Canucks are. I will end the poll question now. I will do my Mitchell sponsor read and I'll get to all of your questions. So the poll, I said, how are you feeling knowing that the Canucks are now locked in to play the Nashville Predators? By the way, remember the earlier rumor from Elliot Friedman was said they were going to start on Tuesday. Patrick Johnson, who I had on my show last Tuesday, um, has do, been doing a lot of work on this. And his best guess, and I actually was, was texting with him um, outside of Twitter, his best guess is that it's Monday. Uh, for game one is Sunday night, the 21st. Game two is Tuesday night, the 23rd. Then you go Nashville for the 25th. Nashville for, no, sorry, Nashville for the 26th. Nashville for the 28th. Vancouver back for the 30th. And then a crazy back-to-back, -back, May 2 in Nashville for Game 6, then potentially Game 7, May 3 here in Vancouver. It's crazy that it's back-to-back -back because there's five and a half hours of travel in between. So imagine that Game 6 goes to double or triple overtime. It ends at 11.30 midnight Nashville time. Sure, you gain three hours by flying back home, but still, I, I don't know how we'd see even a decent game, Game 7, but... No, that's a lot of conjecture. A lot of things have to happen for it to get there. BC Beastly, member for eight months. Let's give uh, BC Beastly some love. How do you get picked to win a jersey on Fan Appreciation Night? And when is your turn, Clay? Need a plus one? <laughs> well, it's pre-picked. It's not done that night. Um, it's based on season ticket member. It's one, it's one of the best perks. So 
all season ticket members. Oh, BCBC, you get to do this next year. At the start of the year, you get to bid on or put your name in or apply for a certain season ticket membership uh, benefits. And of course, the good ones like the uh, that anything that involves players, it's harder to win. Like, but last night there were 24 people that that won jersey off the bat kind of thing. I've won it once. Me and my season ticket partner Mike have won it once, and we actually won David Booth's jersey. So my season ticket partner Mike has a David Booth jersey. You guys know that I have a David Booth jersey. I didn't even win it. I actually went out and spent money and bought one. So Mike and I were thinking when we go to game one on Sunday, we were thinking about wearing matching David Booth jersey. So I'm going to put it in the chat right now. Um, and I, I want you guys to vote on it. This might be the best idea ever or the worst idea ever. So start a poll. And then basically the question is, should... Mike and I wear matching David Booth. Well, they're not matching. His is home lines away. David Booth jerseys to game one. And then it's simply yes or no. Should Mike and I wear matching David Booth jerseys to game one? Yes or no. I'm adding it right now. And then you guys can vote. I, I won't say it, it's it's binding. Um, oh, you guys, I messed up. Okay, hold on, hold on. It's almost going. And then, I, I, then I'll get to all you guys. Hey, there we go. There's the poll question. Should Mike and I were matching David Booth jerseys to game one? Yes or no? Like I said, not binding. <laughs> Better not be binding, just in case we don't like the the result. No, uh, BCBC, they did wear they wear this the game worn jerseys. They just take them right off, right there, and give it. So they're not brand new. They're not brand new. You're gonna be twinning like the Green Men. Clay in the booth, big yes, brilliant. Says Pastor Daniel. Who is David Booth? He played for us about 15 years ago. No, no, not 15 years ago. 10 years ago. Um, kind of a polarizing figure in that he um, he was an outspoken Christian, but like weird views on, on stuff and kind of eccentric and just not the most popular guy. And I'm not sure if he got along with teammates that well. I think I liked him because he was a Christian, but I didn't really do much research. And then I think he posted pictures of him hunting bears and stuff like that. Just, yeah, just, just a kind of a polarizing player, Carol. But I, I liked him enough to buy to buy a jersey. American-born, really good wheels, good offensive um, instincts, but then suffered a couple of knee injuries um, that really slowed him down and derailed his career. All right, let's go to my Mitchell sponsor read. And then we'll get to all of you. Shout out to my primary sponsor, Van City Experts Real Estate. Contact Jason Lim and his team for all of your real estate needs. Shout out to my secondary sponsor, Perform Transform Personal Training Weight Loss. Check them out at ptform.com. Thank you to Gassy Jai Art, maker of this fine artwork. And thank you to Vessi Footwear. Use the tiny the link, tiny URLs. Oh, you know what? There it is. Tinyurl.com slash Vessi Clay and receive a free pair of socks with your next purchase of Vessi shoes. Don't forget, I have one more show this week. That's tomorrow night, a regular Clay's Connects commentary live stream, and we'll basically be wrapping up the entire season, given that it will be marked the end of the regular season and then the start of truly looking forward, looking ahead to playoffs. Mitch Show, reminder to all of you to subscribe, get active in the chat section, get notified of my videos. You can like the video. There are 320 people on here combined between YouTube and X, which is great. Only 28 likes, though, of the 143 watching on YouTube. So make sure you like the video. It helps the algorithm. And like the fact that we're together. And like today especially. I'm going to start doing this every stream, something different. Like the video if you like pink grapefruit juice, which is what I'm drinking right now. You can leave a donation like many people have done already. You can gift memberships like people have done already. Buy your own membership, upgrade your own membership. By the way, when I said that pink grapefruit thing, four people liked it. And you can use your monthly membership message, your triple M, 
And if you're listening on a podcast platform, make sure you rate and review. All right, friends, I'm going to close that poll. 70% of you are saying that Mike and I should wear matching David Booth jerseys to game one. You guys know that I'm not superstitious. You guys know that, uh, you know, that stuff doesn't, uh, I don't get too involved in that, but it could be something fun. So yes, 70% of you are saying to wear matching David Booth jerseys. Thoughts on the Coyotes moving to Salt Lake. If it means some more, if it means some more um, stability, I'm all for it. Marcus says, what were Booth's views that you considered to be weird? Uh, when he was playing for the team, nothing. Actually, I like the fact that he was he was uh, a Christian and he, he wasn't afraid to share his faith. But then um, I started to hear stories about not getting along with teammates. Uh, and then and then certainly after he left the Canucks, he would, um, uh, as X was getting more, Twitter was getting more popular, he, he did a couple of tweets about hunting and he started to get into arguments with people. He wasn't like unhinged or anything like that. It just, and then that all was while his, his career was winding down, at least as a Vancouver Canucks. So Marcus, I can't think of anything too specific. And it couldn't be that bad because I'm still willing to wear his jersey. I just know he wasn't uh, the most popular player ever. Wear a wig. <laughs> the only wig I have is an Afro wig. I'm not sure if that's appropriate. Between LA and Vegas, who do you think Edmonton plays? It's such a toss-up because they're one point apart in the standings. They're both playing against weak, um, weak teams. Given that um, Vegas is ahead of LA right now, all things being equal, they'd have the advantage. So I think I think it will be Edmonton versus Vegas, and then I think it would be Dallas versus LA for the series that are confirmed. I think Carolina whips the Islanders in five. I think Boston beats Toronto in six. I think the Rangers beat Washington in five. And I think uh, Florida beats Tampa in seven. I think that was going to be closer. I think the Canucks beat the Predators in five or six. I'll confirm, confirm that up by tomorrow. And I think that uh, uh, Colorado, Winnipeg, gosh, these are like my two of my favorite teams. I don't know. I, that one, that one I'm, I'm really torn. I know it's going seven. At least I think it is. I just don't know who it's going to be. Ryan, yes, I will see you on Sunday for sure. It's pretty, pretty cool. I think game two is going to be on Tuesday. That's what they're saying. Uh, game one is Sunday. Game two is Tuesday. And uh, I don't know if I should say anything there. I'm probably going to sell my game two ticket. So we're going to go to game one. And I think we're going to watch game two as a family at home. So we're going to be selling some tickets. So um, if you're interested, email me, canutclay at gmail.com, canutclay at gmail.com. And I can, I can send you details. WestJet flies to National Direct looking at tickets for game four. That's pretty sick. Keys to success. Adrian, I think, I actually think the Canucks are deeper at all three positions. I really do. Uh, at forward, at defense, and at goaltending. The Predators do have some really great players in UC Soros, in Roman Yossi, in Philip Forsberg. But I really think if the Canucks um, uh, really work hard, play their game, play a strong defensive game, uh, I think that they can. I think that they can beat Nashville. I really do. I think the Canucks are just stronger overall throughout the entire lineup. Am I in agreement about resting guys tomorrow against Winnipeg? Yeah, Irvin, uh, you might have heard me. I was I was talking about that earlier, and Rick Tockett said, hinted that it might only be one or two guys. I.e., Demko, for instance, wants to play. Um, I'd be fine with it. I'd be fine with it, truly, because we're not playing for anything, any particular position. Indeed, Scott, playoffs. How big is the advantage in the upcoming playoff travel for Vancouver? Um, I don't think, yeah, I hear what you're saying. We're used to traveling, but I don't think it gives the Canucks a particular advantage. I think by this time, a lot of you guys are beat up. They need rest. So I just think it's going to be hurtful to both teams. Dangle scream. <laughs> Leaves can kick rocks and eat sand. <laughs> oh, man. 
Hey, Daniel, theological question. Do you pray for the Canucks to win? I have never once prayed for the Canucks to win. Very truly. I believe in the power of prayer, obviously, Pastor Daniel. But um, I, I do pray. I have prayed for God's will to be done. But I, I think you'd agree. We don't know what God's will is. And I, I think God doesn't worry too much about who's going to win a, a, a trophy in the NHL. But um, I, I, I also pray for wisdom, courage, humility to accept whatever happens and to not get too crazy about it either way. But no, I have never, ever um, prayed for the Canucks to win. Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, the first four games supposed to be, don't quote, yes, um, saw that as well, 21, 23, oh, so you're saying it's 23, 21, 23, 25, 28, okay. Uh, Jamie, there is a Pro Jam concert on May 4 and May 5, so that's why they can't um, skip a day between May 2 and May 4. Canucks game vlogger, Canucks taking five or six. Uh, which Eastern Conference teams are playing? I'd have to look that up, Taylor. I don't know off the top of my head. Is Nashville a rushing team? You know, I'll show you something real quick. Daily face-off Nashville line combos. So this is the Nashville lineup. I can't remember which stream. I remember looking at this one time at a stream already. So that first line is good. Forsberg almost had 50 goals. Ryan O'Reilly, great center, as we know, and Gustav Nyquist. But then to me, you guys, this really drops off. Like Sissons, Jankowski, and Zucker. I would take P.D. Hoglund or Mikheyev over that all, all day. Novak, Bovillia, and Evangelista. We couldn't, we didn't even want Bovillia here. Fourth line, the McCarran, Smith, and Sherwood. Uh, we don't really know those guys, but I guess people could say the same thing about our fourth line. So I don't know if you'd agree with me. I think that uh, the Canucks have the edge in up front. On D, McDonough and Yossi, a very strong pairing. I do like Hughes Heronic better. Uh, Lazon and Fabro, is that maybe that's. Uh, uh, just as good as say Susie Myers and then Stastny and Shen Shen's played here. I'll take Colin Sidorov over those two guys. So I think I give the, I give a more pronounced advantage to the, uh, to the Canucks at forward. And I give them a slight advantage on D again. I, I would love to hear your thoughts. And then in goal, I say that's a wash. Um, you know, I, I, I think the Smith is better than Lankinen, but I think Soros versus Demko Demko is great. Probably going to, be running up to Hellebuck for the Vesna, but UC Sarles can be just as good as Thatcher Demko. So, um, you know, if you say the Canucks have an advantage up front, a small advantage on D and then a saw off in net, I I'm taking the Canucks. I really, really, really am. Yes, Quinn is Jewish indeed. Yes, I saw this. I saw Trevor talking about this on the stream. Anyone on the island? A Canucks meetup, 5 o'clock at the Old City Pub in Nanaimo. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Go meet Chris. Go meet Trev and whoever else is going to be there. That is awesome. Well, out of, out of nowhere, do you think Vancouver gets a practice facility this summer? No clue, fangirl. Sorry, I, 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 I have no idea. I have no, I've not heard a thing about this. Not particularly interested in this right now. Um, always interested in your question, but I, I just have no, I have no um, merit to answer this. I haven't heard anything. So, but he asked me, do I think? Uh, I don't think it'll happen this summer. Luke Shin is going to assassinate half our team of Vili. We'll get a hat. They, yeah, that's true. Uh, Canuck luck in the playoffs for sure. Yes, we did, Adrian. We beat them 3 2, 5 2, 5 2. Yeah, Jack, I think it's it's pretty even. Going to wear Canucks jersey on campus the next couple of weeks to tick off all the egocentric cocky leaf fans. Yeah, keep keep doing, Marcus. Keep representing. Hey, Daniel, you should go meet 
You should go meet those guys tomorrow then, if it's right beside you. When are we going to have a gathering in Vancouver? Yeah, Gerald, if it doesn't happen during the playoffs, then I'm actually thinking of doing just a pure social in August, in the summer. Um, maybe do it at, at, at Splitsville Bowling, um, whatever. But yes, we, we will do a gathering of some sort. Not sure if it's going to happen during the playoffs. Playoffs are always such a crazy time, but we'll see. But we will we will do something. Do Demko and DeSmith split goaltending? I think you go Demko as long as he's feeling good. You are allowed to wear the flying skate for the playoffs. I just don't know if they are. By the way, if you follow Sportsnet 650 on X or on Instagram, you saw me and my daughter Kayla. We we were um, we participated in their little reel they made about about what jersey the Canucks should wear in the playoffs. And then um, for the cover photo, they they put me. Um, they you know when you will post a reel, you can choose your cover, and they they chose me. I don't know if they thought they'd get more views or less views, but it's pretty cool that we were in sports at 650s uh, playoff reel. I'm sorry, reel playoff beard. Kel, if I start growing a playoff beard now, it'll be ready for about 2029 that year. Yeah, I just got my little soul patch, but that I'm not sure if uh, goatee really is my style. Did the 2020 bubble playoffs feel like playoffs to me? Yeah, they did to me, maybe because the Canucks were in it and the Canucks won two rounds, but yeah, I, I was fully invested as, as them as playoff games. We have to book Clay in advance. He's always attending show. Yeah. Just in the last couple of weeks between Joe Coy and Jacob Collier, it's been a nice little run for sure. Do you think they assign alternate as their home Jersey? I don't, you mean for the playoffs? I don't think so. Would you rather have the top 6D in the playoffs as Airhop, BXA, Edler, Hamus, Salabella, or Hughes, Rona, Susie, Cole, and then um, I do think 2011's playoffs were better. They, uh, granted, they don't have a Quinn Hughes, but I do think top to bottom, they were better six. Yeah, we can meet during the playoffs for sure, but probably during away game, home games, I'll be either at or watching at home. Demko then put in DeSmith if it's too hectic. I agree. Yeah, so he, he announced that next year is going to be his final year already. And he's been great. He's been really, really good. So Wallach, there's only 60 seats right now that are black because they're those are the expensive seats right now. Um, but they're going to change all the seats within the next two seasons from red to black. Adrian only wants Demker to play one period. Ah, would you take a top, playoff top six of Sedins, Burroughs, Kessler, Samuelson, Higgins, or PD? Millsy, Brock, Hoglander, Garland, Joshua, Lindholm. Oh, in their prime, the Sedins were pretty sick. And Burroughs and Kessler, they they bring something that this team doesn't have. Then Samus and Higgins versus Garland or Joshua or Lindholm. Man, great question, Marcus. I think I'm taking 2011 again. That's how good that team was. That's how good that team was. Which Canuck player shirt will you wear? I used to wear Horvat. Oh, that's interesting. I don't have any player shirts, but I do have their jerseys. Uh, uh, it might be David Booth, according to all you guys. <laughs> Jeff Carter is done. Yeah, I don't even know what he was, what he's been doing. If we win it all, I demand a photo of the Twins with the cup. That's fair. That's fair. Would I give to Smith a chance if Game Four, for example, if the Canucks happen to go up three nothing in the series, to not keep him rusty? Nope. I, I don't do that, Daniel. If the even if the Canucks are up three nothing series, you let Demko close it out. You might see to Smith if we are way ahead or way behind in a game, but I don't think you start him. You you start him unless you absolutely have to. Blaskate comes in as a regular jersey. No, everything I've heard, Wallach, is that will not happen. Do I think Vancouver replaces Rogers Arena? No, I think that real estate is too valuable, Fangirl. I don't. I haven't heard anything about them moving away from from where they are. Oh, once the seating has changed to match the seats, maybe, but I still doubt it. I still doubt it. I would not resign to Smith uh, again in one year. Um, I think given his decent play, he's going to ask for more than 1.9. And I, I think you got to be ruthless around the edges. Um, I would, I would, Although Shilov's got one more year of waiver eligibility. So it is kind of nice if Shilov's is number three for one more year. So then maybe you do sign to Smith, but I think you can find a player like this. Oh, 
Although Desmond's been pretty good. Like he's been a lot better than like the Halak uh, uh, and the other backups we've had. But I'm still not convinced that I resign him for a year. But yeah, I, I would love she loves to get a chance. But he does have one more, and there's no rush for him. Gosh, that's a good question. Ride Demko while he's hot. Do they wear the skate in the playoffs? I don't think so. I don't think they will. Uh, I don't. I think the Smith only comes in in relief. He never. He's not going to start a game. Yeah, I agree. The 2011 team was good. I feel more like the '94 team. Yeah, a lot of people like the second rank, Pastor Dan. Sadine's greatest line mate? No, Carter, Adrian. The Sadines made Carter look good. Carter didn't... Well, I, I can't say he didn't do anything for the Sadines. Obviously, the most success came with the Burroughs. Um, yeah, I'm not sold on Carter. In the playoffs, would you rather have a top line of Lindenberry, Curtinall, Curtinall, West Coast Express, Sadines, and Burroughs? Lot of line. I'm going Sadine and Burroughs. I'm going Sadines and Burroughs. Yes, when this team hoists the cup, then we can say that they're the best. Longer Demko, longer right now. Demko maybe when all said and done. <laughs> I never thought about the two logos actually face each other. Yeah, I agree. Demko starts every game. Bennington might be available. No, he'll be too expensive. Ryan, the logos do not face each other. Tocket or AV? Uh, A same as Longo Demko. AV for now. Tocket could surpass him. If Pucker Toolman becomes healthy in the offseason, do we pay and play him or ship him the second read covers? Well, you're not gonna get anything for him, but I don't I don't think you play him. I don't think even at his best, he's as good as any of our top six right now on D. Shannon would not sign to Smith. Kempner is saying you can't compare the two teams. That's fair. Who is going to be calling all the games? Yeah. Ah, actually, I don't know because they're going to have, well, they're going to have, they got to rely on the regionals because are is sports that covering all eight series. I can't remember how it works. I don't know who's going to be calling all the games, Simon. I really don't. I don't think Gerald will be walking the black, wearing the black skates. Oh, I take Demko to Smith. I, I don't think Whitmore was that good. Yeah. I like Kirk was good, but I think Demko is better, especially when you're just for, yeah, I, I know it's a different type of game back then, though, too. Hugh Stick and Ring. That's nice. Bros are the best line mate for the Tins. I agree with that. <laughs> I was, matchup is bad now because the logos face the same direction. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> Helen says Burroughs. Fangirl, do you think that Torch put the Sydney's in situations they weren't effective in? Well, it was only a year, and he did have them. I, I didn't like the way he had them uh, killing penalties and blocking shots, that's for sure. Oh, Carter retired today. Thank you. The DeSmith and Seelos question is so good that I made a video about it tonight. And what was your conclusion, Trev? Without being biased, what are our chances of winning the cup? Uh... 10 to 15%. Ryan, as much as I want them to, and they can, I'm not convinced they get out of the Pacific Division. I'm not convinced they get out of round two. So then if you can't get out of round two, it's pretty tough to win the cup, if you know what I mean. Are you not surprised it's hard to get Canuck player teachers now? Uh, I don't follow that, Edmund, so I, I can't tell. Like I don't know if that surprises me or not. Uh, thoughts on the Arizona relocation? I, I'm not sad about it. I, I'm really not. That this... They've been trying too hard, too long to keep that alive. 7 p.m. on Sunday. No, have to, you don't have to make any accommodations for any Eastern. It'll be 7 o'clock on Sunday. Gerald Diddick was great. Corey Schneider was awesome. Yes, yeah, 7 p.m. Torch played the Sedins too much. Canucks and Wild Logos face each other. Wish we had the 2011. Oh, yeah. We don't have anyone that's exactly like Kessler right now. I would love him on this roster. Do you think Torch knew about the Detroit? OT win and then threw the game on purpose. Yeah, you know, 
me and my buddies, Neil, we're talking about this because on one hand, if you, if you don't, if you don't include the Detroit factor, we know that if it's just looking at Philly and Washington, Philly had to beat Washington regulation. So if you don't consider Detroit, then yes, you can justify what Torch did because Philly had to beat Washington in regulation. Washington could not get a point. So that's without considering Detroit. But they also needed Detroit not to get any points. So if the, if if he knew, I see what you're saying. If he knew that Detroit was already um, going in overtime, see that's the thing. So when I, and I watched the replay of the the Washington Philly game, the third period, the the broadcast cut away to show Detroit forcing overtime with three seconds left, and then immediately afterwards, Torts pulled his goalie. So it could have been absolute coincidence. Or it could have been he got word on the bench that Detroit made it to overtime. Neil, tell me what you think. Yeah, Daniel, same thing. That was that was pretty crazy. Washington controlled their own destiny, and they did what you should do when you control your own destiny is they just won. <laughs> Erickson, Beagle, Roussel, or Ruskovich, Boduk, and Glass? Oh, I'm going to go with Erickson, Beagle, Roussel. Demko is at least starting Deltima. How much luck? It depends what you, uh, that's an interesting question, Adrian. It depends what you, what you consider luck. Like any game that goes to overtime, I think there's a lot of luck involved. And I definitely think luck when it comes to injuries too. Um, how lucky are you to stay healthy? What about I, Rippin or Gino? Probably Gino, with all due respect to Rippin as well. Ask why Edmonton has one, Toronto has one, Winnipeg has one. What are you talking about, Simon? Have one what? If DeSmith agrees to a one-year deal and is okay with splitting back up due to Sheila's bring him in, but I think he's going to prefer 25-ish games as opposed to 12. Yeah, I agree with that. You think NHL is going to go to 36 eventually? What other coaches lose their job? Uh, you got to look at any of the bottom feeders. Are they willing? They're all going to ask themselves, is, is this, can we trust the future in the hands of this coach? So anyone from... Arizona to Chicago to San Jose to Anaheim, all those type of teams. Um, Ottawa, they got to hire someone. Is Jacques Martin still the interim? Um, I think Torts is safe. Buffalo fired. Uh, who else do you think? Columbus, where are they? I I, I don't know by name, but I, I think there's going to be a couple more for sure. Do I think that Miller is a more complete player than Kessler? No, I don't because uh, Kessler Kessler doesn't have Miller's offensive abilities, but Miller certainly doesn't have Kessler's defensive abilities. Leadership may be equal, both hot-headed Americans. Uh, so I wouldn't say Miller is more complete than Kessler, but I, I I wouldn't say that Kessler is better than Miller, more complete. So maybe they're about equal, but I wouldn't say Miller is more. 21, 2021 Edler, 2022 Ekman Larson for the playoffs. Oh, I'll take Edler. I don't think he was as bad skating. Yeah, it's, it sounds like it's going to be Sunday. And maybe they come out to YouTube. That would be amazing. I'll go crazy. Yeah, the, the Salt Lake City clappers, snappers, slappers. I don't know. I don't know, Zach. I, don't, I have no clue what it's going to be. Time Myers is playing well. I love it. All right, what do we got today? Undefeated with Tom Greenman, Clay Dressman, Clay Streamman, Niels Fightman, Heronic Holiday Man, Tucker Pullman, and defeated with Heronic Penalty Shot Man. Love it. Keep adding to that. I love it. I'm not sure if anyone's hating to Smith, Tyler, but we we, we have to be realistic too. Just because we we want to move on from a player doesn't mean we don't like him. Fourteen. Minor penalties in the first round like he did in 2020. Torch didn't know anyway. That's why he pulled the goal. Yeah, he, so Taylor, you're saying he was trying to win, right? He was worried about his own game. If Garland, Lino, Joshua can do what Paulson, Niedermeyer, Moen line, we can be in for a deep run. Yeah, that D-Tran, I, I kind of agree with you in that they're going to be an X factor for sure. If you had to make a tier list right now, where would you slot some of our players in each tier based on how well they will perform during the playoffs? Go ahead. Ryan, is this what I wish or what I think? 
based on how well they perform. Okay, so it's not what I wish, it's what I think. I'm going to put Hughes in S, Miller in S, and Demko in S. I'm going to put PD and Brock, Lindholm, Garland, Joshua, Hronik in A, and then put the rest of the guys in B and C. I will take an Aaron Rome jersey over Louis Erickson. Thanks, Philly. Prefer Detroit got in. Great team team mentality. Yeah, they were a lot of fun. They just went on that horrible losing streak for a while. I didn't mind Torts as a coach. I didn't, I wouldn't say I loved him, but I didn't mind him. Yeah, I was thinking, I was Daniel, I was talking to my kids about this too. If multiple OTs could throw my streaming schedule out of whack, but hey, you do what you gotta do. For the playoffs, would you rather have a useless six foot nine fourth liner or a five foot four 20 goal scorer on the team? For the playoffs, I'll take the goal scorer. I think he'd still be good enough to find some space. Best sports bar. You know, I don't, this, I'm bad for this, Pastor Daniel. I, I rarely watch at a sports bar. I'm either at the arena or I'm watching at home. So sorry, I can't give you a good answer. You were there when the Nashville game went to OT. Be back there in 2024 against Nashville. That's crazy to me. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Gerby, because I don't know who Klapka is. Trade talking for Bedard. What are you guys talking about? I thought Torch was being petty, but then found out the timing between Detroit's tying goal and Philly playing the goal. He was too little for Torch to pull it on purpose. That's totally fair, Neil. That's totally fair. I'm not sure if they're going to bring back. Can you imagine if they bring back U2 where the streets have no name for the 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 come on the ice song and then they have a holiday for the goal run? That would be pretty cool. I um, really love the way JT Miller is playing. I think he. Last year was a frustrating year for him and the entire team, but now we're seeing what he's made of. So uh, he's got to live up to that big contract, but so far he has been. I, I like him a lot. I've always said that I want Bust to Move by Young MC, but they'll never go to it, SGP. Salt Lake Saints. Oh, I like that. Yeah, Iron, one of the green men lives out of province, though, so I'm not sure how many games he'll be going to. I'm talking about the way hockey games that what you. Why, why we don't have games? Government banker. Simon, sorry, I still don't I, I still don't know what you're asking. Sorry, Sammy Paulson. Corona chirp was awesome last night. That was pretty funny. Yeah, um, here there'll be seven. And then and then I think I asked this once before. Is it Cian or Sean no, or or Cian? Cian is. It looks like Cian, but I, I feel that's not right. Let me know. Um, here there will be seven p.m. and then what time in Nashville? They're central, right, or they're east? Nashville is oh two hours ahead of us. So yeah, Pacific time. I think home games will be seven, and then away games will be five p.m. I like Di Giuseppe. I'm not, although Oman's a center, I think Di Giuseppe can still give something. Uh, five e iron, because they're two hours ahead. I don't think they'll start at six. They'll probably start at seven their time, so five for us. Yeah, no, Dismiss being the best backup since Demko has started, but that's only been three years, right? Would I rather have the Canucks win game six and six overtime to go to game seven or just lose game six? No, you never want to lose. You never want to lose. Yeah, Halak wasn't that good. Uh, actually, that's true. Ju that's a good point. I have been to Canadian Brew House. I've been there a few times in Richmond, and it's good. Go Horn Light, some contests. I did not know that Rafti had a brother. Honit, Honit Cole, sickest playoff beard. I don't know. Maybe Joshua looked menacing in a playoff beard. Tyler says, like the stream. I, I agree with Tyler. Yeah, I think, Daniel, the, the city wants some excitement back for sure. Shen versus Zadorov. Oh, Kian. Kian. Thank you. I got it now. Kian. I used to have a car flag. I don't know where it is, Neil. I don't, uh, yeah, I used to have one. 
Ian with a K. Kian. All right, Kian, you got it. Wow. Now Helen wants to go fly to Nashville too. You you think it's a 5 p.m. game in Nashville? No, then it would be 3 p.m. here. Kian, thank you. Ian with a K. Kian. Will they be as good next year? No, I think there'll be a small drop off, but it doesn't mean they can't make the playoffs. They will start when talking says so. Canucks Islanders game and we started Halak. Yes, I Iron, I was at that game. That was that was crazy. Biggest X Factor. Ooh, you know, I'm gonna say Elias Lindholm. Let's see him live up to why we why we traded for him. Would you have Martin? Halak, Holtby, Nielsen, or Bachman uh, during their Canucks tenures, not prime. I still thought Holtby was good. I go Holtby and then Martin. I like Martin. Would you rather LA or Vegas play the Stars and be the central side of the bracket? I would love uh, Vegas to play Edmonton and let them beat each other up. So then that's who we play next. Ooh, custom car flags. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, actually, Helen, that's fair. But I I, I was texting with Patrick Johnson. And he was pretty confident that's going to be 7 p.m. here. Canucks and fly and then play and around too. Well, I'll take, the, I'll take the win. Yeah, it might be 5 p.m. on Sunday. I, I doubt it, though. I still think it's going to be 7. Playoff games. I like hosting the games. Either way, games in Vancouver. At, or are you talking about outdoor games, Simon? Outdoor viewing parties? Sweet for the Islanders game. Yeah, yeah. we had to come back for like two or three goals, right, Aaron? But that's it. 5 p.m. Pacific. When Okay, that, now we're saying the same thing. Now we're saying the same thing. I don't even know what an RDO is, Kian. Tell me what that means. Tyler, Shannon, and Fillmore, let's let it go. Everything's fine. Yes, Tyler, you are certainly allowed to express your opinion. Um, not sure why the reaction actually was so strong to it, to be honest with you. Nastro's two hours ahead. There's Sun Run. Yes, I, I've heard about that for sure. Is it guaranteed Sunday? It's uh, pretty close to guarantee. Pretty close to guarantee. Uh, what game should I spend them on? I still don't know what an RDO is. Uh, what game should I spend them on? Save them for June. As soon as you tell me what an RDO is, I will answer it well, Kian. <laughs> yeah, seven to seven, that seven to five. I agree with that. Brock would be a uh, bubble. Brock would be awesome. There is sun run earlier in the day for sure. Oh, roster day off, like extra annual leave. Uh, you know, I wouldn't save them till June, honestly, because, um, you mean to watch the games, right? I wouldn't save them till June, just in case we don't get there. Then, then you'll be like, uh, that was a waste. I would take them now and then, uh, and then figure it out once we get there. Best regular season game this year. Hmm. Maybe when we won in New York, is that, is the one in the Rangers? Cause it, they they won the president's trophy and that's the one where both Hoglander and Pedersen scored sick goals, right? That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Love you too, Kian. Canucks will beat Nashville and the team after Nashville. However, and however many until they get to the Stanley Cup. Well, yeah, you got to win four rounds. So a path realistically could be Nashville. And then we have to play the winner of Edmonton, Vegas, or Edmonton, LA. And then we have to play the winner of Dallas, Winnipeg, or Dallas, Colorado. And then we got to play the winner of the East. Canucks viewing party in Montreal would never happen because it's so pro haves and even if they had one in the common, everyone would be speaking gibberish, pig Latin. <laughs> okay. I better not say too much. That was pretty funny, Marcus. What's wrong with this year's Brock? Nothing. I thought he was great. Oh, you're, oh, you're making my point. You're, you're saying, yeah, why do we need bubble Brock when we have this year's Brock? I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. If the green men showed up, that would be pretty cool. Yep. We should be able to beat Nashville, but we got to respect them. Absolutely. The 10-goal game versus start, but it wasn't a great game, but it was a good result. 
No, Jesse, it's the other way around. They originally said April 22nd for not just Canucks, but NHL playoffs to start. Then they moved that earlier to April 20th. And then that's why some Eastern ones are started. But for us, they originally said 23rd, and now it might be 21st. So I know it's crazy. They did beat all three New York teams, but I thought the Rangers one was the sick goals for sure. The best game of the season will be tomorrow when the Canucks go up 20 nothing. <laughs> Canucks not as strong as 2011. You guys, it is 12.07. I didn't know that uh, it got so late, but it's because it was awesome. Uh, some really, really good questions. Over 400 people. You guys are ready for playoffs. So am I. So tomorrow night, I am at a viewing party at Rogers Arena, actually. It's uh, for a certain... Um, going as a guest of someone. So I'm going to be at Rogers Arena in in one of the suites or, or one of the the... the premium lounges where we're bringing my lovely wife, Gail, meeting a couple people and we're, we get uh, free dinner drinks and we get to watch the game. Uh, like it's a road viewing party basically. And then I should have plenty of time to get back here and get to, um, and do my stream at 11 PM. So I look forward to seeing you guys where we might be talking about the Canucks is the best team in Canada and uh, in terms of points. And then we can keep talking about what's going to happen in this Vancouver and Nashville series, but at least we'll know also who Edmonton's playing. And therefore we will also know who Dallas is playing as well. All right, friends, you guys are awesome. Moderators. Thank you for keeping this a safe and respectful place. Members. That's legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Carol Bovlander, legendary Andrew Chang, hall of fame and franchise members as well. Thanks for your support and to everyone else for watching, for liking and subscribing. I want to thank uh, people who went above and beyond today. Jason got the donation train out of the station. Then Carol gifted 10 memberships. Wallach uses Triple M. Daniel used Triple M. Marcus donated. Marcus then used Triple M. Rosero used a Triple M. And Beastly Beastly used a Triple M. So thanks to all of you for going above and beyond. Thanks to Vancey Dexter's Real Estate. Thanks to Perform and Transform Personal Training Weight Loss. And once again, don't forget, I am here at 11 p.m. tomorrow night. On your way out, subscribe, like the video, leave a donation, gift a membership, become a member, upgrade your own membership. Use your monthly membership message. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, rate and review. All right, guys, you guys are awesome. So much energy in here. We're excited. Apparently, you're pretty confident that we're going to beat Nashville. And you want me and Mike to wear our matching David Booth jerseys. I'll run it by him tomorrow. I'll let you guys know what he says. As always, stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care of yourselves. And take care of each other right before my ending joke we had a late donation come in always got to recognize these so thank you daniel let's give daniel some love in the chat just before we go remember donating it keeps me from ending the stream but uh i'm not going to make you do that we'll save that for a playoff stream so thank you daniel for the late donation the two dollar donation really really appreciate you so for real although i'll go really slow just in case anyone wants to get in a late donation stay safe Stay healthy, <laughs> take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. By the way, did you hear that Aladdin was banned from the magic carpet race? Yes. He was caught using performance-enhancing rugs. Try to sweep it under the carpet. God bless, and go Canucks go. Booyah. Booyah.